Hey guys, welcome back to Monday with Matt. It is Thanksgiving week, which means we know that you are prepping to just totally gorge yourself on all the tasty Thanksgiving food. I know that I am because Thanksgiving is one of my favorite days of the year, but we have 10 tips for you guys on how to not overeat and how to recover from Thanksgiving dinner because nobody wants to feel sick afterwards and I think we've all been in that boat where you eat so much you just feel terrible. Mm -hmm. So follow these 10 tips and you will definitely survive Thanksgiving dinner much easier than you have in the past. And so we have a few fun facts for you guys. According to the Calorie Control Council of America, an average American can eat up to 4,500 calories on Thanksgiving Day. That's 229 grams of fat. So in a gram of fat, there's actually nine calories. Carbohydrates have four calories and protein has four calories. So therefore, fat has twice the amount of energy in it, therefore it's twice as easy to build up body fat. One pound of fat is roughly 3,500 calories. One pound of protein, chicken, meat, whatever it might be, is gonna be half that, so roughly 1,750 calories, somewhere in that area. So there was a lot of calories and fat, so that's the one you really have to watch out for. So according to that study, basically you would be gaining a pound and a half of fat from a 4,500 calorie meal. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, roughly. That's crazy. Yeah. But some more research found out more likely that you're going to be eating closer to 2,500 to 3,000 calories. 4,500 calories is kind of an extreme, but that's still about double what you should be eating on a normal day mm -hmm. in one meal. Mm -hmm. So let's break some of that down. One slice of pumpkin pie has approximately 323 calories. <laughs> A serving of stuffing, which is about half a cup, is 180 calories. Mm. Mashed potatoes and gravy is roughly 300 calories, <sighs> which I know, it's terrible. And you <laughs> eat mashed potatoes and gravy all year long, not just at Thanksgiving. Six ounces of turkey is anywhere around 300 calories, and that really depends on whether you're eating white or dark meat, and if you're eating the skin, because taking the skin off of your turkey actually gets rid of a lot of the fat and the calories mm -hmm. that you don't want to be eating. Mm -hmm. But then again, it's also the seasoned part and sometimes the crispy skin is the tastiest. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and that's also six ounces of turkey. You always tell me that really you only need about three ounces of three protein ounces, at yeah. a meal. So yeah. that's double a normal serving, but it's Thanksgiving and you're not always making your plate. So, <laughs> <laughs> so let's dive into the tips. Tip number one. Start your day off right. I like to go do a turkey trot in the morning. It's just usually a 5K, but that's already about 350 calories that you've burned off before 11 a.m. So it's a great way to start your day. If you don't want to pay for a turkey trot, it does go to charity, so that's also a nice thing to do. You can go and serve food at a soup kitchen. You're gonna burn a lot of calories carrying the food around. You can do a circuit training exercises during the parade while you watch the parade. So you can do this in your pajamas. And of course, you could also just go to the gym. Um, some gyms are open, some aren't. You can get a workout in before you even start eating. That's a great way to the just best, the best jump way. start. The best way, yeah. So tip number two, fight for the right to eat a salad. I know a lot of the times with all the food that's going on and all of the people are cooking all kinds of different dishes, salad gets overlooked because when you have sweet potatoes and green bean casserole and things, nobody really wants to cook or prepare a salad. But if you start with a salad and a glass of water, that will actually kind of fill up your stomach quite a bit and then you'll know how hungry you are before you dive into the really high calorie foods. So it's a good way to start your meal and kind of pace yourself before you go back and get the turkey and the stuffing and the bread rolls. Yeah, what's also interesting about eating salad, you're gonna get some other vegetables with it. And with that, there's not only an incredible amount of vitamins and minerals your body needs, also salad is mostly water. It's about 90% water. Vegetables are mostly 90% water. But they also contain something called soluble and insoluble fiber. So really what they help do is they help wash a lot of the stuff out of your body so you don't retain as much of it because uh, insoluble fibers, meaning water doesn't break it out, it actually pulls additional water out of your body since you're having so much liquid and salt in your body. It'll actually help you to lose weight and to keep you healthier and not to have any indigestion or bloating. Because bloating is the worst. <laughs> I always do it next year. It'd be better this year. 
<laughs> yeah, because you're going to follow the 10 That's tips. Right, I okay, so tip number three, eat smart and make a game plan. I know there's a lot of really tasty food out there, but if you figure out beforehand what things you're most excited for, I think you know, picking your top three and only putting those on your plate is a good way to not overeat. So don't go in the kitchen and put a spoonful of every single dish because you're not really going to want all of that, but then it's in front of you so you end up eating it. So for me, my dad's smoked turkey, my mom's green bean casserole, and my mo grandmother's stuffing. And both of my grandmothers make really great stuffing, so a, like half a serving of each. And then that's all that I'm gonna put on my plate and forego the mashed potatoes and gravy, forego the dinner rolls, yep. the sweet potatoes, all of that. I'm not even gonna bother putting mm -hmm. it on my plate yeah. and then I don't overeat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think with that is what you're really, what you're doing is you're watching your quantity. So there is another way of going about it, which Evan's way is really the number one way. Um, but the other way is if you do want those five or six or seven things like I do, uh, if you have enough willpower, which I struggle with sometimes, is to take a really small portion of all those and if you can keep it to one plate about this high and not this high, you can probably make that work out. But one of my favorite uh, things to do is make sure that I'm drinking plenty of water during the meal mm -hmm. and that keeps me full so I really don't want to eat a whole bunch of extra food. Uh, and I usually have to save a little room for dessert. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually planning on eating smaller, lesser amounts of all the main entrees so I can save a little room for dessert as well. That takes us right into tip number four, is that start you start small. Mm -hmm. So I know after dinner, you're going to want a slice of that pie. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also know that after dinner, you might not actually be hungry anymore. Mm -hmm. These have shown have a problem figuring out when they're actually full. Mm -hmm. The sensors don't always work. Mm -hmm. So instead of getting you know a quarter of the pie mm -hmm. or a huge slice of pie, get a really thin sliver of it and then you're going to satisfy the want to have the pie, but you're also not going to eat that full 323 calories of pumpkin pie that we talked about earlier. And most of the time, if you really check in uh, and you ask yourself, am I really hungry? You're really not. And uh, you, you're just enjoying it so much. But the other part of that is a physiological reaction. When you start to have a lot of sugars, carbohydrates in your body, your blood sugar will go up and it will start to drop back down. So even though there's plenty of calories in your body, you're gonna be feeling artificially hungry. Your body's really not because your blood sugars drop too much. And so uh, watching your total quantity is really important, especially the combination, making sure that you've got the protein for the carbohydrates and stuff, which isn't too hard to do on Thanksgiving. So then tip number five, don't veg out all day. This seems really popular on uh, Thanksgiving is to just take a nap and watch football all day, but instead, just burn calories doing things that you might already be doing. Helping in the kitchen, going outside and playing football in the backyard. Cleaning up actually burns a ton of calories. Oh, doing chores after so much dinner. Work. Clearing oh. the table and washing all the dishes. Just trying to stay on your feet all day will keep your metabolism up. So when you eat, you don't just ingest all those calories and then fall asleep. The worst thing to do is eat all of that food and then go take a nap, even though turkey makes you sleepy. <laughs> Try and fight it off. Tryptophan. <laughs> fight the tryptophan. So tip number six is really important. Everybody is in the same boat and you really shouldn't feel guilty. It's one day out of the year and if you do gorge yourself and you eat a lot of food, just get back on track the very next day. So take Thanksgiving kind of as your cheat day and then don't sweat it because everyone else is bloated and everyone else has eaten just as much food as you. Mm -hmm. So just on Black Friday, wake up and start the day off right. Have a protein shake. We posted one last week on the blog and you can just start over and then not go into a guilty downward spiral all the way until you do it again at Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> because it's a really easy thing to do, you feel bad and you just keep going down that road of eating unhealthy and eating lots of calories. So just enjoy your Thanksgiving day and then start fresh on Friday. So tip number seven is watching your liquid calories. And so some of the favorite drinks around my table are wine, uh, eggnog, different types of iced teas. We do a lot of Bloody Marys back home in Texas. Bloody Marys, and so all these count for a lot of calories. And alcohol calories affect you uh, very similar to the same calories you'd have from a pumpkin pie or desserts. And so they wreak havoc on your they're whole empty. system. <laughs> What's de they're definitely empty. And so what tends to happen is when you're, you're eating these, is it throws you into an imbalance with your water and all that stuff. So you gotta really watch how much you're taking in. Literally, if you have a cup of eggnog, you have a glass or two of wine, 
um, and then you have Bloody Mary and sweet tea. That's all your carbs. So and you're you not can, even you can't thinking eat. about that. No, no, you, you can't even eat. You, yeah, you see the pie and you know that's not good for me, but you drink three glasses of wine and you don't realize that you've had right. 400 calories yes. just in your, what you've been drinking right. during the day. So I think just like your food, ten, people tend to drink more of whatever it might be, eggnog, alcohol, and so it's easy to go overboard. So you don't want to go double overboard by having too many uh, high caloric liquids and too many high calorie foods. So you have to really balance that and consider prepping what you're going to do for that. And so that takes us into tip number eight, mm -hmm. balancing all that with a lot of water. Right, and so the, the importance of water is massive because it helps metabolize all of your food. So it takes roughly 60% more water to metabolize protein, it depends upon the type of protein, fish or chicken, whatever it might be, but it takes a lot more water to break down protein. And so it's easy to get sleepy when your body is putting all of its energy trying to break down the food. Water contains something called oxygen, so it helps to reoxygenate your body, but also helps to metabolize the food as well. One of the important things a lot of people forget about is that when you're drinking alcohol, you're drinking coffee during the holidays, is that they are actually diuretics. In other words, they'll force your body to sweat more or to go number one or urinate more. And so you have to have a balance of this so that you don't become dehydrated and lose all your minerals and electrolytes and stuff like that. So what I usually say is have about two glasses of water per alcohol serving or per serving of coffee. And with that, you'll actually have more energy during the holiday, you'll feel better during the day, and you won't have a food or alcohol in over the next day. So that takes us into tip number nine, which is water retention, which most people know as bloating. So with, uh, with this excessive salt intake, uh, a lot of my clients, uh, not even during the holidays, but throughout the year, and they, they come back, you know we live in Napa Valley, and Napa Valley is famous for food and alcohol, salty foods, there's lots of salt mm -hmm. in the food. So it's people, rough. <laughs> and people eat, a normal person will have about a pound or two pounds of food a day, even if it's uh, salads and vegetables, it's very healthy. But a lot of people will come back and say, Matt, I'm up five pounds today. Mm -hmm. And so I ask how much water you drank, and they say, well, I had six, seven, eight glasses of water. And I tell them, well, that's about eight pounds of water. And then you had two cups of coffee, two glasses of wine. So literally, they've had 10 to 12 pounds of liquids. And that's not uncommon. Now, here's the interesting part. So most of us will not gain five pounds of weight from food, but a lot of that is from liquids. And so with the high salt intake, especially during Thanksgiving and our regular diets, because salt is consumed way too high in our society anyways, is with that high salt intake, what we don't know, or most people don't know, is that that salt will help to retain a lot of the water. Therefore, your body weight is artificially bloated or enlarged. And so when you see the scale, don't, don't scream. <laughs> don't forget, don't fall off the scale and faint. Do know that a lot of that is because you had too much salt. It's a good indicator that probably your blood pressure, your resting heart rate's too high. And so it could be a medical issue, but it's also a weight issue that you need to be aware of. And so balance out your water during the day. Tip number 10 is to prepare for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So preparation workouts Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then also having post workouts Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so really, you're, I, I kind of consider this is kind of a joke, but you're actually training for a race. So the, eat, the race is eating and drinking too much during the holidays, and we're all going to do it to some extent. And so if you can consider and look at it this way, that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday before Thanksgiving, you're actually going to kind of work out a little more, maybe eat a little bit less. So your bank account is going to be a little low, or you've got a little extra in there, and so we want to balance it out so that when you do have the extra calories, your calories balance out throughout the week. So you can do that by less calorie intake, but also through more exercise. That exercise doesn't have to be standard exercise where you are running, doing, like, like Evan said, it could be just doing more stuff around the house, folding laundry, vacuuming more, just do more physical activity. Get up from your desk at work, walk around more, and a little bit every day adds up. So if you were actually just to move an extra 15 to 30 minutes a day, three days before and three days after Thanksgiving, you're gonna make it for all the calories that you had during Thanksgiving. So embrace the calorie deficit before, yep. and then embrace it again Friday, Saturday, Sunday yep. to get rid of that water weight, get yeah. rid of the bloating, get rid of the extra calories, and drink a lot of water and really just eat healthy all of those days around Thanksgiving. Just mm -hmm. pad both, of, both sides of Thanksgiving with a really healthy lifestyle and one day won't really ruin the goals that you're working towards. Okay guys, so we really hope that those 10 tips helped you out and are going to help you this week before Thanksgiving and even after Thanksgiving 
check back Thursday night because we're going to have a special surprise for you guys Ooh. then and then again on Monday so we're actually going to have three Monday with Matt videos a lot of workouts. in these seven days because we know what you're going through we're going to be going through it too Thanksgiving is a wonderful and a terrible time of year <laughs> but we don't want you guys to gain all of that weight during the holidays and then have to start fresh in January. Don't forget to check the links down below. Matt's website's there, uh, my blog is there where all of our videos are stored. Don't forget to like this video if you're going to follow these 10 tips and subscribe so that you guys can come back every Monday and sometimes Thursday to work out with us. So we will see you guys on Thursday. Bye!